is thy name. I want to invite you to the book of Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. There's a verse I'd like to call your attention to. It's verse 12. Exodus chapter 12 verse 12 if you have it would you stand if you're still looking just keep your seat and let me know you still trying to find it Exodus chapter 12 verse number 12 in the New International Version it says on that same night I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. You may be seated. I want to close this year out with this thought. I'm covered. I'm covered. I was at the Bayou Classic sitting at the gala. And at the table, a young man was from Dallas, Texas. And we were talking and he mentioned that he was type O blood. He had type O blood. And he said that if you have type O blood, you have a better chance against COVID. I had not heard that. I, I'm not a medical doctor. But he said, my blood type helps me to ward off COVID. I said, I'm going to have to check that out. First of all, the significance of blood type. Blood types are determined by the presence or the absence of certain antigens. Substances that can trigger a patient's immune system to attack the transfused blood. Safe blood transfusion depend on careful blood typing and cross matching. You've got to cross match the right blood types in order for the transfusion to be successful. What qualifies you is the plus or the minus because it indicates rather this antigen or is present or it is absent. I didn't know my blood type. Knowing your blood type is important because in case of an emergency wherein you need blood transfusions, your blood type determines which blood donor is appropriate and safe for you. In other words, every blood type is not safe for you. Transfusion is needed when you're undergoing major surgery or surgery that may cost a loss of blood. 
So I was researching it and blood type O negative is a typical type. However, it has qualities that work better against COVID. I said, shut your mouth. O negative is a universal type. Interestingly, individuals with O negative blood type were further protected against viral infection. 0.74% versus 95%. I said, this is interesting. Type O individuals were at decreased risk compared to non-type O individuals with regard to secondary outcomes such as severe illness and death. In other words, if you don't have type O, COVID can take you out. I checked my blood type. I had old negative blood type. I said, look at God. I had the right blood type that when COVID came into my system, I had the right antigens to fight off COVID. And I didn't have to go to the hospital. All I had to do was stay in lockdown in the house. I thought about it. Does the church need a blood transfusion? I thought about who in here needs a blood transfusion? Because if you don't have the right blood type, sickness can take you out of here. Amen, somebody. And the Lord led me to this passage. And it's interesting because the first thing I discovered in the passage has to do with timing. Everything has to do with timing. The verse says, on that same night. On that same night. When God said, to Moses, tell the people that this is what you need to do. Because if they don't do this, they won't be covered. And I came to say to us tonight as we close out this year, there's something you need to know to make sure you're covered before you go into 2023. Can you say amen, somebody? And what I've discovered about God is God never does anything without warning you first. Wake up in here. God never does anything without warning you about what he's getting ready to do. It never slips up on God. And God never wants to slip up on us. He warns them in Chapter 11, verse 4. Notice what the scripture says. So Moses said, this is what the Lord says. About midnight, I'll go throughout Egypt. God says, about midnight. Not at midnight, but about midnight. I think I better say this because it's about midnight. He says, about midnight, somewhere around midnight, I'm going to show up. And I thought about this because people were asking me, are we having watch night service? People were asking, are we going to change the time? Well, why would we change the time? Because New Year's happened to fall on Sunday. Because church folk don't go out. To parties and clubs. 
to watch balls come down and red stick social. They, church folk don't do that. Church folk go to church. So it doesn't matter what day New Year's Eve falls on, what night, watch night falls on. It, it's the fact that church folk go to church. And I was watching all the cars headed toward the river center. Not toward church, but the river center. Are y'all in this house? And, and I, I, I said, well, God, help me with this. God does his best work at night. Especially his redemptive work. Because when you look at Genesis chapter 1, God said, let me separate day from night. And so God did his best work in Genesis 1 when he separated day from night. And he said, let me let the electrical luminaries light up the night. So they'd have diminished sight. So that you want to go to sleep at night. When I was in the world, Houdini said, The freaks come out at night. But now that I'm saved, I've discovered that the father also comes out at night. Am I talking to anybody? Because when I looked at Exodus chapter 12, the Bible says five times that God was going to do this at night. But then when I look at Exodus chapter 13, he led him by a pillar of fire in the night and then a cloud in the daytime. God does his best work at night. I looked at Numbers chapter 11 and that's when God sent manna down from heaven in the night that when they woke up, they had bread the next morning. And the songwriter said, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. I looked at Joshua chapter 8 and that's when God used Joshua to fight the battle of Jericho. It was at night. And then I looked over at Judges chapter 16. It was at night when Delilah rolled up on Samson and she put him in the recliner and she said, let me braid your hair. It was at night. Am I talking to anybody? Then I looked over at 1 Samuel chapter 19. And when Saul was chasing after David, it was at night when he tried to kill David. And his sword ended up in the wall. And David walked away with a little bit of his garment saying to him, I could have killed you while you were asleep. And you woke up to kill me and God delivered me. Then I looked over in 2 Samuel chapter 7. It was at night when Nathan came to talk to David because God had a nighttime conversation with Nathan and said, Nathan, tell David. A certain man had a flock of lambs and another man had one little wee lamb. And the man with the flock of lambs took the one man little wee lamb. And David said, that man surely ought to die. And Nathan said to him, you are the man. God does his best redemptive work at night. And then I went over to 1 Kings chapter 3. God told Solomon. When those women came to him about the death of that baby. And they tried to pull the wool over Solomon. And guess what, brothers and sisters? God spoke to Solomon at night and told Solomon, hey, this is what you do. To determine who the real mother is of the baby. But then it was at night. In 2 Kings chapter 6. When Elisha went to the widow and she had lost her son. And she lost her son. Laid over on the son at night and died. It was Elisha that came to him at night. And brought the son back to life. It was Nehemiah. Chapter 2. But he went and checked out the walls. God does his best work at night. But then he really does some great work in the midnight hour. 
Because I heard somebody say, I'm going to wait. Oh, you heard that too. To the midnight hour. When my love comes tumbling down. Let me get you back to church. First Kings chapter 3, verse 20. It was the midnight hour. Ruth chapter 3, verse 8. It was the midnight hour when Boaz woke up and it was a woman laying by him. It was the midnight hour. In Judges chapter 10, in Acts chapter 16, it was the midnight hour. All I'm trying to tell you before we get to the midnight hour, God does his best work at the midnight hour. And so you don't have to be afraid to come to church because of what somebody going to do to you out there because you're already covered. You don't have to stay home and be afraid. You are already covered. Let them act a fool out there. God has us covered. It's all about timing. But then I, I look at the text. But not only is it timing, but then there's also trouble. I, I like this because the Bible says strike down every firstborn. The logical question is why the firstborn? Because the firstborn normally received a double portion, a double inheritance. Can I say this to you? If you are one of the firstborn, you receive a double portion. But then what does that say about the other born? Amen, somebody. The Bible is clear about the firstborn the text says the oldest sons why sons because the oldest son gets a double portion but the oldest son also takes the place as the head of the family when the father is no longer present I need y'all to get this part I'm going to strike down the firstborn and you wonder why the devil likes to attack our boys and especially our firstborn boys because the security of the family is locked up in the firstborn all of the wealth goes to the firstborn am I talking to anybody Brothers and sisters, sometimes God will reverse the tradition. Because if you look at Genesis chapter 25, he flipped it with Jacob and Esau. Because Esau, because Jacob was a trickster. And Jacob trip, tricked his brother out of his birthright and God let him do it. I need you to get this part. God will let tricky people do tricky stuff. So that they can learn that God has no tricks up his sleeve. In other words, God will let folk run trips and tricks on you. But guess what? In the end, God always makes sure you end up with what you're supposed to have. Am I talking to anybody? When you look at Genesis chapter 38, there was another switch with Reuben. And then when you look at Genesis chapter 48, there was another switch between Ephraim and Manasseh. In other words, God will let trouble come into your life just to trouble you. So you will figure out, have you been born again? Come a little closer. Remember, it was Nicodemus in John 3 that came to Jesus by night and he said, how can I inherit? And he said, you must be born again. Don't miss this, brothers and sisters. Biblically speaking, firstborn means you the first child born. But God says, I got another plan. Not just trouble, but the text says, brothers and sisters, you're going to have to go through some trials. I came here tonight to say to you, you may have had some trouble 
in 2022. Don't be surprised if the same trouble is not in 2023. Because here's what I've discovered, that if you're going to have the right relationship with God, you're going to have to have some trouble so you can find out what kind of relationship you have. Because here's what I have learned, that when you really love God, you're going to have to carry some burdens that you don't want to carry. Simply because you happen to love God, God will let some weights be so heavy on you, you don't think you're going to make it. But he allows you to go through the weight and to carry the weight because he's helping you to carry it. Take your burdens to the Lord. Leave them there. But then now watch this. Not just the trouble, but the trial. He says, I will bring judgment. I need you to send, see this. I need you to look in your Bible and see what it specifically says. Why am I going through this trial? Why is this test happening to me? I've been to church. I've been tithing. I've been to Sunday school. I've been to Bible study. Why is all this happening to me? Notice what that verse says. God says in his word, I will bring judgment. I want you to write this down. I want you to think about this. I want you to make note of this. God has to make a choice. Either you get a warning or you get punishment. Let me say it again. When you're going through a trial, either it's going to be God warning you or God punishing you. Why is this important, Pastor? Notice who the judgment is against. The gods of Egypt. Look at that verse. It's G, small g. Notice why God allows judgment to come in your life, in my life. Notice why God allows trials in your life and my life. Because not so much what you've done, but it's what the little gods are doing to you. Don't miss this. It's not always what you have done. A lot of times, it's what the little gods are doing to you. Anytime you let the little gods trump the God, you're going to have to go on trial. Because God has to come to a conclusion of whether or not you're guilty or you're innocent. Am I talking to anybody? The judgment is against the gods of Egypt. Isn't it interesting that God would let your enemies bring trials into your life? Come a little closer. Isn't it interesting God will let the little G's uncover your weaknesses? The weather was bad the other day. It was cold the other day. Snow was on the ground. Planes could not take off. Flights were canceled. I need y'all to wake up right here. People were running off the highways. Interstates were shut down. 
snow and ice everywhere. But the Chiefs had a football game. Isn't it interesting? People were canceling church, but they didn't cancel the Chiefs football game. Come a little closer. Help me understand how we can cancel church because the weather people said a bad storm is coming. But you will play football after the bad weather has come. Those little gods will get you in trouble. People ask me, Pastor, are we having church on Christmas? And the ones that called and asked me didn't come to church. You see, because I learned a long time ago, don't let folk make you cancel church. Because they'll go everywhere else when they want to go. Why cancel church? Just take the ones that come to church and have church with the ones that come to church. Why am I saying this? Because I'm trying not to fuss. And I'm sure enough not going to cuss. But I believe the church needs a transfusion. We are not doing well with the trials that are coming. Because guess what? Everything else is back to normal, but yet church is still zooming. Amen, somebody. But here's what I want you to notice also. God is not doing it to you. He's doing it to your enemy. And when you look at that word enemy, it's the enemy that's in me that I need to watch out for. Amen, somebody. In order for you to be delivered, then your enemy has to be present at your deliverance. God will not deliver you when you're by yourself. He delivers you in the company of your enemies. Am I making sense? Stop asking God to take out your enemies. Because what God wants to do is bless you in the front of your enemies. Why, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. Because when you go through the trial, when you go through the test, you come out with a testimony. And when you look at the word testimony, you can't have a money without a test. And if you notice that the I is between the test and the money, and so the only reason you're going through the test is so that you will have a testimony when you come out of it. Everything that has happened to you, God did it. And he did it so that you, so that I, so that we could be better. I don't want to fuss, but I want to show us something that has become apparent to me. We live like we are not covered. We act like we are not covered. Because our actions suggest that when we are tested, when we go through trials, when trouble comes, we run off. When we ought to run too. Am I making sense? Why do you say that, Pastor? Because the last thing in the verse says, I am the Lord. That's it. So the trial comes 
so you can det- so that you can determine whose side you're on. And for some of us, it's hard to tell what side you own. For some of us, it's hard to tell who's on the Lord's side. Because we let trials, trouble, and tests separate us from God. When Paul said, I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. And so, he says, I am the Lord. Because when you come through the test, you ought to have a testimony. But your enemies ought to know who your God is when you come through your test. Am I talking to anybody? If God doesn't do it before your enemies, then your enemies don't know who your God is. If God doesn't do it before your enemies, then your enemies don't know how you were delivered. Come here, David. Tell us your story. Well, in Psalm 23, verse 5, he said, I'm going to set you up in the presence of your enemies. He says, I'm going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He he said, listen, I'm having a party and I'm responsible for the invite list. If you were responsible, you would invite your friends. But God says, I'm over the invite list. I'm going to invite all your enemies to your party and I'm going to set them down at the table and I'm going to spread the table so that your enemies can sit across from you and watch you eat when they thought they were going to starve you to death. Watch you eat when they thought they were going to shut you out. I'm going to put you in a position where they thought they had you. But you're going to say, Would you like some chicken? Would you like some greens? He's saying, I'm going to put you in a position that you invite them to eat from your table. He can't do it without the presence of your enemies. Can I say this to you? You covered. I don't care what happens to you. In 2023, you, you, you covered. No, let me say it another way. You ought to know that you're covered. So don't you think that your enemy is going to get the best of you because it looks like they're winning right now. The book says they will soon be cut off and wither away like the green grass. I'm here to tell you, if you made it through 2022, you can make it through 2023. But guess what? If I don't make it through 2023, I'm still covered. Am I talking to anybody? Come here, Saul. Tell them your story. Well, if you turn to Acts 7, there was a brother named Stephen. They were stoning the brother. And I approved of his stoning. And guess what? While I was standing there, the people threw their coats at my feet. I'm standing there watching them kill the brother. I approved it. Can I say this to you? There's some folk going to be standing there. And it looks like they've killed you. Look like you've been stoned to death. And God has them right where he wants them. Because if you go over to Acts chapter 9, 
the same brother that the coats were at his feet is the same brother that was on his beast that was knocked off his beast and the same brother was converted because he was at the stoning of Stephen can I say this to you there's some folk when they watch you go through what you go through and they throw mess on you and they throw coats on you and all that kind of stuff and they think that you're going to be covered up by the stuff can I tell you something you covered by something different than that stuff. Well, come here, Jesus. Tell them your story. If you look at Luke chapter 23, one Friday, it looked bad. One Friday, it was bad. Can I tell you how bad it was? It was so bad that the Savior couldn't save himself. Now, let me tell you something. Let me tell you what's bad. It's bad when your Savior can't save himself. But here it is. If the Savior would have saved himself then you wouldn't know who saved your savior okay <laughs> if he would have saved himself we would not have known that it was God that was going to save him and so when it looked like he couldn't save himself his father saved him. And I came to tell you tonight, when it looks like you can't save yourself, it's the father that will save you. So much so that Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And if you go back and check the record, Saul, when Saul was there with Stephen, Stephen said, Lord, don't charge this to them. They don't know what they're doing. I came to tell you, your enemies don't know what they're doing when they're hurting you. Because what they're doing is they're summonsing the Savior to come save you. Am I talking to anybody? I, I can't help but tell you, you got to have a testimony. And you can't have a testimony if you have not passed the test. And if you have survived and you made it through this year and you're here on a watch night, that's a, that's a testimony in and of itself. Because if you were anything like I was, you weren't in church all your life at watch night. Because you too were rolling with Houdini. And the Lord worked magic in your life and he turned your life around why are you saying this pastor because you covered you got the right blood type it doesn't have to be A it doesn't have to be B it doesn't have to be O it doesn't have to be plus. It doesn't have to be minus. Can I tell you what? The blood that Jesus shed. I said the blood that he shed. It wasn't type A, wasn't type B, wasn't type O, one plus, one minus. Listen, the blood that he shed on the cross matches all of our blood types. So whatever your blood type is tonight, you covered. Did you hear what I said? You are covered. In the country, we used to sing a little song. I know it was the blood for me. He died way out on Calvary. I know it was the blood. 
Not for my mama, not for my daddy, my brother, my son. It was the blood for me. And they had a little verse in that Dupree that said, the blood came streaming down. And I know it was the blood for me. I'm done. You are covered. When you walk out of here tonight, you walk out of here with your head up, knowing that whatever comes your way, you're covered. Why? Because Jesus has already paid the price. So don't you worry about COVID. Don't you worry about Trump. Don't you worry about interest rates. Don't you worry about jobs. Don't you worry. Listen, you covered. Let me say it again. You covered. Even with $6 a dozen eggs, you covered. Even with Jiffy Cornbread and a dollar a box that used to be four for a dollar, I'm, you covered. And you need to get that in your mind. You covered. It may not look good, but you covered. Now, I'm going to come back tomorrow morning, and I'm going to deal with the next verse. Because the next verse is interesting, too. And so I say to you tonight, because I'm not fussing, but I'm seeing what's going on. And the church needs a transfusion. We've lost a lot of blood. We're suffering. A lot of churches are closing. This church has had members join every Sunday for as long as I can remember. There are more people in this church than we have seating capacity for. And other churches are closing. Listen to me carefully. Our testimony is still the same. Not one member of this church has died from COVID yet. And I'm stupid enough to believe that we covered. And I plan to go into 2023 covered just like we were covered in 2020. 22. So it's 11.45, so we're a little...